Hello friends of Big Tracker, welcome to another update. Um, and uh, this time around I thought let's do things a little differently, let's not do the usual uh, written report, but instead how about I give you all a little video tour of Bin Tracker as it exists at the moment. Uh, of course, as you know, it's not complete yet. Um, but anyway, maybe this, uh, this can give you a, a bit of an idea of where things are at right now, what still needs to be done, and also give a bit of a better, uh, a bit better impression of what this Bin Tracker thing actually is and what you can do with it. Right, so before we get started, um, my excuses for not doing the write-ups that I promised in the last newsletter. I didn't really get around to it and it's like, I, yeah, I need to be in the mood for, for writing up stuff. Uh, that said, I have worked on documentation quite a bit. So, yep, we have documentation and um, especially API documentation is starting to be quite decent, I think. Um, I've been working again on scm to wiki the, the in-source documentation tool, and I've given it a major overhaul, actually. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, starting to be quite a, a useful little tool. And uh, still need to do another round of work on it, because there's still some bugs and things it doesn't pick up and so forth. Uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, anyway, yeah, so API documentation, quite okay. User documentation, not so much at this point. I still need to do a lot of it. Uh, but I'll get to that. And I also hope that um, some uh, some of you folks out there, once Spin Tracker's uh, source has been released, uh, Maybe uh, some of you uh, will also add documentation and do tutorials and that kind of thing. Well, yeah, at least that's the hope. Uh, anyway, let's get started and let's have a look at Bin Tracker. So, um, uh, as you can see, I added some uh, nice little uh, welcome uh, screen here. Um, not that it actually does anything at this point, but um, don't tell the other folks, right? Uh, we'll get to it. Anyway, the main and uh, major news uh, for this update is emulation works. And that's great news because that was one of my major concerns uh, in regards to this project. Uh, and really happy to say that it worked out more or less uh, exactly like, like I had uh, planned it. So yeah, really happy with that. And so let's take a look at that. And the way this works at a low level in Bin Tracker is you can define your own emulators. So let's do that and we'll be defining a ZX Spectrum 48 uh, emulator because that's pretty much the only machine that uh, Bin Tracker fully supports uh, at this point. There is some uh, preliminary support for Atari 2600, but it's not complete yet. So let's stick for spe uh, with Spectrum for now. And this gives us our emulator object, and now we can run that emulator. There we go. Um, and so this is me. Uh, uh, as you might have expected. Uh, I did look into uh, a few other emulators and I think in time we can add different emulation backends. But for now I'll stick with MAME, make sure that that works uh, properly uh, and stuff. Right, so yeah, MAME, you can use this like you normally would, right? But you can also control this instance uh, through bin tracker. Uh, so let's do that. And the way to demonstrate it, I think, uh, let's write a little uh, assembly language program and let's run it on the target machine, right? So we say emulate run and we want to run from address uh, hex 8000. And now, uh, so normally, and the way this will be in uh, once things are finished, is that now you plug in the assemble command here. 
But right now, uh, the assemble command outputs in a format that is not co uh, compatible with what the emulator expects. So we need to do some conversion voodoo. But uh, yeah, ignore that for now. Um, that's just a temporary solution and it will not be like that once uh, things are complete. So we need to do uh, a list to string conversion here. And we're gonna map integer to char on the output. And uh, now we can plug in our assembly. We assemble for uh, Z80 or Z80 as I prefer to call it because I think Z is much cooler, right? Oh, anyway. Um, and we're gonna write a little uh, program that just changes the border color again. Uh, not because that's super exciting or anything, but uh, it goes quickly and you can see that stuff's happening on screen, right? So let's do that. Yeah, what is it with me typing today? Right, uh, well, uh, that's still missing a load command to actually set the A register. No. And that should do the trick, and it does. Nice, um, so yeah, as you can see, that kind of stuff works. And while that might not be seem super useful in this form, I think you can, you know, like imagine how to uh, how to how this might be useful. Anyway, for now we don't need it, so let's get rid of this emulator thing. Uh, yes, so emulation. Um, next next point. Um, so. I have actually um, been reworking the UI system again, yes, um, because I still wasn't happy with the with the solution uh, we had before, and uh, we now got a uh, an object oriented uh, system. It's using co-ops, which um, some of you might know from Common Lisp, but we have it in uh, in Chicken Scheme as well, which is super cool. Um, and um, the point for, for doing this work is that um, I felt that the UI was still not flexible enough. Like what I want is that you can uh, change the UI yourself at runtime. And with the new system, we are pretty much there, uh, I think. I mean, still some roughness around uh, the edges as you might expect uh, when things are, you know, when the paint hasn't dried on things. But generally, uh, yeah, you can do stuff like add another of these welcome buffers, for example. Let's do, let's do that. I mean, not, not that that's useful in any way, but I think it goes uh, to demonstrate um, how things can be done in Bin Tracker. Right, so we'll do a multi buffer add. And I'll talk about why we do multi-buffer add in a sec. Point is, um, this command here, UI, if you run that, uh, it returns the current uh, UI setup. So, uh, yeah, you get a you get a COPS class back. And uh, this top level layout being a multi-buffer, we add stuff to it. So, multi-buffer add. Um, we want to add to UI. And uh, what do we want to add? We want to call this thing, let's call this thing WB, that's just the name. Uh, we want it to be visible, uh, we want it to be weighted normally, and we want it to be a UI welcome buffer. Tip tip. And there we go, uh, as simple as that. Um, yeah, now, as I said, not sure why you'd want that, but uh, I think it's to demonstrate that <coughs> the kind of things you can do here. Okay, so um, let's get rid of that again. Move for delete UI WB. Rip. And let's, well, talking about configuration so this whole thing and this is not 
what you can do, for example, you can go to your configuration and you'll see down here um, this sets up the layout of uh, like the main the main uh, layout that you see on startup and you can configure that and you can use a different layout if you want it, it's still pretty experimental at this point so i expect that this will break quite often but that's the general idea that's the kind of stuff i want to be possible in bin tracker and yeah i think we're getting there so uh that's cool um, how about Jay? Can't type today. Okay, so um, while we're at it, config. So yes, there are a lot of config options here already at this point. Like for example, if you don't um, if you don't fancy the dark uh, theme that I have in place, uh, you can just uh, choose a light one. There's, there's a couple standard themes, like you'll have Monokai and this kind of uh, solarized, uh, these kind of color themes. Um, they, uh, they are provided. So, uh, and of course you can write your own, obviously. Um, anyway, let's check out Bean Tracker with a light color theme. Um, that's how that looks. So, yep, that kind of thing works, but I'm a sucker for dark themes, so... I'm gonna switch that back and um, yeah so uh, another thing I want to talk about is accessibility uh, yeah it's something I've been thinking about for a while because um, unfortunately we have one major problem with accessibility and that is that uh, the TK toolkit that we're using to build the uh, bin tracker uh, UI doesn't support the accessibility APIs offered by, um, by the common operating systems. So this is a problem and um, well, uh, okay, so if you've got uh, say a uh, mild visual impairment, then this, this is fine because you can just, um, you know, you can change the font size, make it bigger, you can use a, uh, a high contrast uh, theme, that sort of thing. But um, if you've got a major uh, visual impairment, like that's, I mean, changing the contrast and stuff obviously only gets you so far. So um, what I've done, what I've implemented, uh, and um, it is basically just, just uh, a small hack at this uh, point and a lot more work needs to be done to really make bin tracker accessible for everyone but okay here's what I've done I've uh, integrated a thing you have, uh, I'm providing an option that you can integrate a screen reader or a text-to-speech tool and uh, if you do this this will be enabled in in bin tracker so did I save? No, I didn't. Okay. So if we fire up uh, Bin Tracker now, we can say stuff. Hello, folks. Which in itself is not particularly useful, but I'll show you in a in a second um, how this could be useful. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's let's um, let's cut all the crap. Let's actually show a module uh, because that's what, what you're all here for, right? So, uh, yeah, this is what module view uh, looks at this point. Um, there's still some wonkiness here, like um, resizing of these uh, panes. The initial resize doesn't work properly. Like, um, it should look something approximately like uh, so on startup. But it doesn't right now, so I'm still uh, working on that. But um, anyway, yeah, you can do things now. You can, uh, you know, edit, edit stuff. Uh, okay, here's here's a funky feature in 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 Bin Tracker. 
Um, normally, you know, you use the the main keyboard rows as your uh, piano thing, sort of, and that works exactly the way, same way in Bin Tracker, of course. However, uh, there's this sort of extended thing, like if I press Shift and I hit a key on the lower row, it will go one octave below the uh, the standard octave, right? And if you do that on the upper row, uh, it will go uh, one octave above. So you have a total of over four octaves that you can access uh, without needing to, you know, switch the, the bass octave around, which can be pretty annoying if you like, you know, uh, need to change it often. So uh, yeah, that kind of stuff, um, basic editing works. Um, what um, what doesn't work yet is copy and paste. Uh, it's not done, and also some uh, some stuff like inserting rows and that kind of thing. I mean, um, um, well, you know, there's problems like this which need to be uh, solved. So that's what I'm working on at the moment, actually. Um, but yeah, regarding this. Regarding this um, uh, speech API, let me quickly uh, get out of here because this is now broken due to this. Uh, let's open our usual test module. And yes, I'm still just testing with this one uh, single configuration uh, because my thinking is uh, first, all the basics should work with this, uh, with this configuration. And once that's done, then I can start adding um, new things. But first, the basics need to be done. Um, well, so what you can do with this, uh, with this, um, uh, with the uh, reader API, there's a command called uh, where. And there's also a command called what, and these two are linked to where is linked to um, where is linked uh, to Alt Shift W at the moment. Block new or group patterns. Block CH one instance zero row eight column note one. And that will tell you where in the pattern you are, right? Uh, and um, uh, the other thing, uh, you can also ask what's currently under on the cursor, and that's just LW. Well, you can change the key bindings, of course. Before. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this, this little accessibility hack uh, I've implemented, and uh, yeah, please let me know if you think that's useful or how that can be improved, because I do want Bintrack to be accessible for everyone. Uh, right, so yeah, um, that's pretty much where things are at right now. Um, uh, so let's talk for a second about uh, things that still need to be done. Well, there's a million bugs uh, at this point, and uh, yeah, I'm slowly, you know, I, I, I got like, I got these these stacks of, of uh, notes, and um, once I'm, I'm through these stacks, then things look, uh, are going to look well. Well, just by, uh, need to work through these bugs. Um, also, a thing I'm doing at the moment is um, I'm renaming, I'm rebranding uh, the, uh, the components of Mdale. Uh, and the reason I'm doing so is because I think we have, there are too many things named config in bin tracker. There are too many configurations. There's emulator configurations. There is the main bin tracker configuration like this one here, which I showed you a second ago. Um, there are uh, various small things that are called configuration. And then there, of course, there are the uh, uh, MDale configurations. And uh, so I've decided to rebrand MDAL configurations as MDAL engine definitions. I think that makes it a bit more clear what they are 
uh, and less confusing with all the other config stuff. Um, and so, yeah, at this point, I've already changed the documentation uh, a bit. So in most places, you already see uh, MDAL definitions uh, used instead of the name configurations. Also, yeah, file endings are going to change. Uh, MD config is going to become MDEF, uh, MDEF, and MD mod is going to become just MMod. Uh, I think that gives a nice consistent uh, naming scheme. Uh, so yeah, yeah, still need to uh, change quite a few things in the in the source regarding to that, which will also make the naming in the API more consistent, basically. Um, so yeah, that I want to do. Then, as I've mentioned, the one ma uh, major thing is copy and paste. I'm going to start working on that in the coming days. Um, and yeah, more documentation. Also, um, before the before the uh, source code release, I would very much like to add at least one more uh, engine definition. So there's at least two different engines uh, you can use in bin tracker. Um, yeah, what else? All well, things I would like to do uh, before the uh, source release, I'm not sure if I'll get around to it, is fix the assembler. The assembler is horrible code at this uh, point with like, global states uh, splattered all over the place. So I need to get rid of that. Uh, I've got a plan, but um, first I'll do the copy and paste and then... Uh, uh, so, and the other thing um, I would like to do, but I'm not sure if I get around to it, is add the plugin API. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I've got it worked out on paper, um, not pretty much how I'll try to, to integrate that. But um, yeah, anyway, but I think generally speaking, um, things are very much on track for the promised source code release by the end of this month. Um, so, uh, please stay tuned and check it out. Uh, and for now, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.